The cold air is flowing south through the Great Lakes and into the Midwest region. We take a close look at Michigan there, and you can see the cold air advection stratocumulus and cumulus coming straight south, getting very strong modification of the air mass over the warm waters of the Great Lakes and even the land surfaces with all that warm weather we've had up there. It's almost Saturday night up there, and if we switch over to the infrared, you can see that cloud field loses definition, and that's because it blends in with the warm ground, the warm waters, and it is a low cloud. And low clouds are pretty tough to detect on infrared. There's the weather map for this afternoon. The cold air is delineated by this area of high pressure, and it's spearheaded by a ridge that extends south from the Dakotas and Nebraska, right there down into Texas. And the cold air has flowed so far south that it has even shifted the winds there in Mexico. And some thunderstorms developing along that front. Still has not cleared Florida yet, barely moving into the panhandle, and a warm afternoon through Georgia and up towards Virginia. And if you go further out to the east, some thunderstorms out over the Gulf Stream waters. Further up north, some very unsettled weather. The remnants of Nicole moving into the Canadian Maritimes, and we've got a winter storm up there from Anticosti Island up to northern Newfoundland. And you can see those gusty winds up to 48 knots out there in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And this wraparound, lots of snow back into Quebec and into the Great Lakes area. And it becomes more showery in character as you go out west. Still out around Pittsburgh, up towards Lake Ontario, and down towards the Appalachians, it's still liquid form. Turning our attention to the west coast, we have another weather system. You probably remember yesterday we had this cold front along the west coast looking something like that, and it has moved into northern California and in through Reno. You can see those northwest winds sweeping into the San Joaquin Valley. And also the thickness field reveals a cold core low, and that's producing some snow showers along the Cascade Mountains. Take a quick look up north. Alaska getting back into that warm atmospheric river, moist advection, warm advection type flow. So the Gulf of Alaska definitely open there and temperatures up near 40 around the Anchorage area. And temperatures also a little bit higher in the interior, 20s out around Fairbanks up to the Brooks Range. And as we go east, we get back into some of that polar air. Where is the core? Well, the thickness field suggests that one little segment is out here over Manitoba. You can see that five or that five one three decameter closed isopleth. So that's a little chunk of that polar air, and the bulk of it is actually up there in Baffin Island, and it forms a little axis, kind of like that. So basically two components, and it's being replaced by warm air coming in from the southwest. To see what's coming our way, let's take a look out in the Pacific. This is one of my favorite sectors. It covers Alaska, Yukon, Northwest Territories, Canada, so any wintry weather coming down our way, we're going to see that. Now, you can follow along looking at the bottom right. That'll tell you when the chart is valid for. So this is a six-hour chart for this evening. And we start out with a southwesterly flow from the Gulf of Alaska up into the Northwest Territories. And that's carrying that moisture into the Alaskan interior and into Yukon. This is also a positive East Pacific Oscillation Pattern, positive EPO, and that's basically comparing the 500 millibar heights from here and down here. So it's kind of like a gate, and since we have a strong height differential, we're going to get a lot of flow through that gate. So that's positive EPO, and you're going to see this shift as we go forward. And by the way, this is 500 millibar height and the vorticity in the colored shading. So we bring that forward. 
Obviously, the fire hose is on the southeastern Alaska coast. Lots of rain and snow. And we carve out this cutoff low south of the Aleutians. So that is sheared off. And the main belt of westerlies is up in this area now. So down south of that, we've got kind of a blocky pattern and a little cutoff high off of Vancouver Island. And this is on Monday evening. And going into the middle of the week, you're going to see that high build right there into Alaska. So giant cutoff high, 579 decameter high. If we saw that in the springtime in the central U.S., we would probably be looking at 70s and 80s for highs. So obviously it's not going to be that warm down in Alaska, but it is going to be warm at least in the upper levels, above average temperatures. Now we've got a negative EPO pattern. So here we have high pressure, and down to the south we have low pressure, high heights and low heights. So the gradient is backwards, and that's given us a negative EPO pattern, and that tends to be correlated with outbreaks of cold air into the U.S. And you can see that northerly flow right there, strongly out of the north, so we're going to have a period of very cold weather coming up around mid to late next week. So let me show you why all this is important. We're looking at sea level pressure and the 700 through 1,000 millibar thickness. And this shows high pressure out there in Siberia, very stormy in the Bering Sea, and that fire hose of moisture and warmth heading onto the coast. And that's significant because that's going to be dumping a lot of precipitation in this area. And when we put snowpack down that's fresh, that's a good insulator. So that works its magic as we go into Monday and Tuesday, and you're going to see the heights build across Alaska and Yukon. Look at that, 1028, 1032 millibars, 1036 millibars. So that's a big high that's starting to build. And going into Tuesday and Wednesday, those pressures really come up. 1060 millibars across Yukon. That's going to be Wednesday midday. And when we get a 1060 millibar high up there, that is coming south for sure. Now you probably remember that ridge aloft, and if you've read some of my books, you know that when you have a lot of cold air, that tends to lower the heights aloft. Well, we have that big ridge covering this entire area. So that tells us that the Arctic air is fairly shallow. There is a lot of warm air aloft, and that's helping to build those heights. And it also forms an inversion up at about a few thousand feet. And below that, lots of cold air. That is somewhat of a paradoxical situation. Anyway, if we roll this forward into the rest of the week, yeah, there goes that chunk of cold air heading to the lower 48. And that high up there in Yukon gradually weakens, but it is stormy in the Gulf of Alaska. We know that there's another atmospheric river heading up to the coast. There it is. You're seeing the precipitation field here. And that's going to lay down more precip around the 240-hour point. And you can see that's very similar to what we have right now. So we could see a repeat of this going into the end of November. Let's go ahead and take a look at those temperature extremes. The newest guidance just came in for tomorrow pretty much near normal across the country. Looks like we're going to start out cold on Monday morning out there near Yuma, Blythe, and Las Vegas. 44 degrees. I think that's Lake Havasu City tying the record. No problems on Tuesday, kind of a transitional period. But on Wednesday, some of that cold air is starting to show up north of Reno. A little bit more cold air showing up out west for Thursday morning. On Friday, that first big chunk of cold air lands in the northern plains. Morning temperatures below zero from Casper to Valentine, Nebraska. 10 degrees at Goodland, and they may not go up above freezing during the afternoon. There's how it looks for Saturday. Cold air coming down into much of the central plains. Also, Another plateau high setting up in the Snake River Valley and the high deserts out west. 
And one thing that I forgot to mention, this is the 500 millibar chart. This is basically the same thing you saw earlier, just a different perspective. When we get into these blocky patterns with these closed centers, like what we have here, the models do tend to have trouble. So there's a lot of ambiguity, what's going to happen later in the week. And rolling that forward, you can see that cutoff low ejects and goes, well, it flattens out the ridge. That's what's happening right about here. And then it makes its way down into the United States by Wednesday, Thursday, 23rd, 24th, heading towards Thanksgiving. So one thing that's very clear, since this originated from a closed low, we don't have a whole lot of confidence what's going to happen there or across the U.S. itself. So really, anything beyond five to eight days is a little bit murky. We don't know that for sure. And you can see there's a lot of these deep systems off the West Coast. And that one really shears out. That's 360 hours out. But overall, what we can take from this is a very deep polar vortex across northern Canada, northwesterly flow, lots of episodes of negative EPO, a positive PNA pattern during some periods, and all of this is going to give us an active pattern getting into the last half of November. So that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.